Hey, Vlad here, DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous video, we have seen how to move a computation from the stack to the heap by manually managing our own stack on the heap. This was one of the advanced techniques for managing recursion. And today we're going to talk about an even more general concept for managing the control flow in our programs. It goes by the name of continuation passing style. And even though eliminating tail calls is not its primary purpose, let's see how far we can get. This video is separated into two parts. This one simply introduces the concept and in the next one, we will see how we can apply it to our sets in our homegrown collections. This video shouldn't get too long, which doesn't mean that we should waste any more time. So I'm just going to shut up and let's roll the intro. As always, we're in the Ubuntu virtual machine and we have our Sublime running over here. And at the bottom, we have Terminus, which is a plugin for Sublime, which emulates the terminal for us, which runs SBT, which runs the test every time we save the file. And before we start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the, uh, from the test and I'm just going to uh, run the main that we have, which is the Fibonacci main. So if I go to the Fibonacci main, and what I want to do is I want to remove its uh, privileges. Uh, I want to say that this is not a main anymore. So now I should complain that we don't have a main. Come on. There we go. We don't have a main. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to create yet another file called CPS. CPS dot Scala. And the same as over here. I'm just going to copy that. In fact, I'm going to copy that over here. I'm just going to call it CPS. And this will be an app. And we're just going to print line hello world. And do the hyphens again like that. And finish the entire main over here. Let's run it once to see that everything is working so that I can start explaining CPS. All right, before we begin, a quick disclaimer. Firstly, continuation passing style or CPS is a rather large topic. So uh, we're going to have just an intro for it. And um, uh, in the hope of salvaging just the parts that we need to uh, figure out how to solve our problems with these sets. And uh, secondly, I'm relatively new to CPS myself. So uh, take everything I say about this with a grain of salt. All right, so what is continuation passing style? CPS is a style of programming in which the computation always goes forward instead of returning control to the rest of the program. And therefore, there is no need for the stack. This is also why CPS is so well suited for eliminating tail calls. Because usually, if the call, if the recursive call is not in the tail position, then the computation might run out of memory. But if there is no stack, then there is also no memory to run out of. I swear to God, it made much more sense before I said it out loud. Anyways, even though the JVM is a stack machine, at least in theory, it will be possible to replace the entire implementation of JVM with continuation passing style and thus not require the stack at all. However, this is not what we're talking about today because it turns out we can actually mix and match these styles. So we can uh, write a program with CPS in Scala, even though it runs on the JVM, which pushes the procedure stack frames on the stack. So we can write a part of the regular Scala program in CPS and delimit it from the rest of the program, which is not written in CPS, which is also the reason why the continuations that we're dealing with today go by the name of delimited continuations. And also sometimes they're called partial or composable continuations. How is it done? Well, the essential idea that instead of returning the result to the original caller, the result is being passed to the so-called continuation. And the continuation is a simple procedure, at least in Scala. In some languages, this is actually a language level construct. So um, essentially, you have a method which has an extra parameter, which is this continuation. So then when the method is done calculating whatever it was supposed to calculate, it doesn't return the result. It just sticks it as a parameter into the continuation. And this continuation does the same thing with its own continuation and so on and so on and so on. So the continuation is simply a procedure, or usually it's an anonymous function or lambda, uh, which simply represents the remaining steps of the computation. And once we're going to start playing around with it, it's going to become more clear. So let's get to it. All right, so uh, let's remove this line. And we're going to start with a program which has nothing to do with CPS. So this is a very regular problem. So uh, program. So we're going to have a 5. We're going to have a 15, which is 5 plus 10. And we're going to print out print out the 15. Nothing magical so far, right? So we can imagine that this was some procedure that was calculating the number 5. It returned the control back to the program, so it was stored in the 5. We're taking the 5, we're calling the plus procedure, which takes as parameters the 5 and the 10 
Once it calculates the 15, it returns the result, puts that into 15. We're taking the 15, sticking it into print line, no magic so far. In order to understand continuations, uh, we're gonna start with a helper function called ID. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate that, uh, put that 25 in there so that we can delimit the next thing that we're doing. And uh, we're gonna have a um, def here as a helper uh, called ID, right? It takes some sort of input, right? Of type input, 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 produces an input, input, right? So this is just to keep things, um, to keep things simpler, right? So we, we usually, um, the continuations, they, they do also something fancy. For example, they run on a different thread or they, they do some magical things. In our case, it's gonna be just the ID. So whatever we pass in just comes back, right? So this has nothing to do with continuation passing style just yet. This is just a step uh, to get there, okay? So what we can do now is uh, we can just uh, take these, put them in here, and instead of having a five, we can do ID of five, and we can do ID of 10. Right? It shouldn't change anything, right? Because ID just returns that thing uh, that we're passing it, right? Now, before we continue, there is already a function uh, which looks exactly like this, defined in Scala pre-def. And if you remember, um, pre-def is uh, one of those objects that is being implicitly imported in every uh, Scala file, right? So instead of defining it ourselves, uh, we can just call it. It's called identity. Identity, right? So it's just it's just always in scope. You can always use it, right? So the result is still. 15, okay? Let's start uh, converting this identity function into, into CPS, right? So um, in fact, maybe I shouldn't have removed it. I'm gonna press Control Z a few times. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go back forward again. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is let me, let me duplicate that, go into here, okay? So we're gonna have another scope over here where we're gonna play. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have ID again. I'm gonna rename it to CPS. Right, so the idea is that uh, there will be another type here, continuation result. So again, instead of just returning the input, we're gonna stick the input into the continuation. Right, and I'm gonna put it on the next line. Right, and because we're sticking it into the con continuation, the result is going to be not the input, it's going to be whatever the result uh, of continuation was. And as I said, the continuation is a simple lambda that we're passing in over here as a parameter. And it takes the input, and produces the continuation result, right? This is all what continuation uh, is for now. So the way we're gonna use it uh, in the first step is not gonna be in the traditional continuation passing style because again, we're slowly, slowly getting there, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do, in fact, let me copy that, all right? Okay, so we're gonna basically mix and match. So instead of calling identity, we're gonna call it, we're gonna call CPS. Right? But because we're calling CPS, we also need to pass it the continuation, which will take the input and produce the continuation result. Well, nothing says that the input and the continuation result uh, can't be of the same type. So what we can do is we can, as a continuation, we can pass in the identity, right? It takes an int and it produces an int, right? We're gonna leave that part as is for now, like this. Okay, before we continue, uh, let's also convert this into a um, into a current function. So instead of a comma here, let's have two parameter lists. And therefore, we can replace this comma with, with that, okay? Like this, right? All right, so uh, we're gonna leave this one alone, right? So we're, gonna, we're not gonna convert this call to CPS for now. We're just gonna leave it like that. And instead, we're actually gonna make use for the first time of the actual continuation passing style. So instead of passing something relatively useless as identity as continuation, we're gonna pass something more useful. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do that. Copy, actually duplicate that 25, right? Paste that over here, okay? So again, instead of just uh, passing something useless um, over here as a continuation, uh, first of all, we're gonna replace those, curly, uh, those braces with curly braces. Right? I'm trying to do this as, as much as possible, you know, step by step, right? So instead of passing the identity, we're gonna t uh, pass in the function that is gonna take the five that is coming from, uh, from here, right? The input is gonna be passed into here, right? So the five comes in here and it's gonna be passed into that continuation, okay? So the five is gonna be here. And now inside of this, we can keep going the same way as we kept going before, right? So we can take this and just put it inside of the continuation. like this, 
right? Still 15. I mean, it's gonna stay 15 for for quite a while, right? So the next thing that that we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing to uh, this identity uh, as we did to to the other one. So I'm gonna copy that, right? I'm gonna convert that to CPS, right? And we're gonna pass in this useless identity the same as before, right? Nothing's gonna change as long as we're seeing 15 here. We're doing everything right. The next step is going to be this. I want to keep all the stats because I want to commit that commit that thing in the end, so that you you know so that you see uh, you know all the all, all the steps that we did, right? So now again, instead of passing something useless over here, uh, we're going to pass something else, right? So we're going to pass that thing, and that thing is uh, going to take the fifteen, fifteen, and it's going to print it out. Like this and like this, but when we're pa when we're calling CPS, the first parameter is going to be five plus ten, like this, right? By the way, this last step is probably the most important um, important step of all. So this is where we where we where we're actually using continue. And this is not a five anymore, by the way, over here. And I and I forgot to remove it over there. So it was also not a five. Do we have it as well over there? Yeah, this is not a five anymore. This is actually a unit. Okay. Yes, there we go. Okay, so over here we had a CPS of five. Five comes in over here. The rest stays with a regular control flow. Over here, CPS was a five. Five over here, but we're using an identity. CPS of a five. Five is over here. Now we're doing CPS again. We're passing this five in, in, in there. Doing plus 10. We have a 15 over here. We're printing out the 15. We could also keep going with this. Right? We could convert everything to CPS. Right? We could say, okay, the last one, the CPS where the 15 comes in, right? And uh, the function, instead of being identity, it's going to be the print line function, right? But this is a bit too much. Now, first of all, why would anyone do something like this? Uh, some people find this uh, relatively ugly, and this is also what is known as callback hell, especially in languages like um, JavaScript. So the idea behind CPS is that uh, the function, this one, the CPS function, is not just um, just calling the continuation, right? Uh, the idea is that there is some some logic in there, and it knows when to call the continuation or or when not to call the continuation, or maybe to call the continuation in a different thread, right? So, for example, if we look at this one, you can imagine that this would be something like get user get the user with the ID of five, and once you get the user, you know, um, calculate his um, you know his his bank uh, bank balance, right, with, of, of this user. Right, and then it comes back over here, and everything could be happening, for example, in parallel. Uh, this is what is happening in the in the JavaScript world. Uh, for example, right now they're they're they're, they're taking uh, you know they, they have been doing this for all the time, and this is uh, again uh, as as I mentioned, this is called uh, callback hell. Callback hell, right? So um, the next thing that we're going to do is actually annotate the types so that we understand what what's up. So this is a uh, a continuation that takes as input an integer, the five, but it produces a unit, right? This whole thing produces a unit because over here, the last thing is a print line. The same thing is happening to um, to this one, int and unit. And if you don't understand that, then uh, you know maybe pause the video and uh, you know try to try to follow the types. Uh, maybe you should scroll up over here, right? So this is an int and unit over here, right? So we need to pass it something that takes an int and a unit, and it will construct the unit. So um, some people don't like that. And it's getting kind of hard, you know, to get used to. Uh, therefore, there's a, a compiler plugin in, in Scala and the library, which uh, together allow you to rewrite that into a style that looks as a very regular sequential style program, uh, but still uses CPS behind the scenes. Now, before I'm gonna before I'm gonna show this to you, uh, I want to say that we're not gonna use it in our our set. So I'm just gonna show it to you, just so that you know that it exists, but we're not gonna end up using it at all. Okay. So in order to use it. Uh, let me save the file first. All right. Uh, we need to go to our build file. We need to go to our build file, and we need to add a few things. Um, the first thing that we, I'm just going to copy paste that. So the first thing that we need to do, and we need to add a compiler plugin. So we just do add compiler plugin. Uh, it's coming from Scala Lang plugins. Uh, it's called Scala Continuations Plugin 2.12.2. Um, now notice that usually. If we have um, two of these, like over here, then we can ha we can name the jar without specifying the the Scala version. But we are right now at Scala 2.12.4. However, the continuations plugin was published only for 2.12.2, which is fine. And the uh, minor version is binary com binary compatible with everything, right? So therefore, we're not using the double thing here, right? So it's 2.12.2, and the version is 1.0. 
3. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to enable the so-called autocompiler plugins, right? So um, we were adding it and we're also enabling it um, right away, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a library dependency as well. So the thing is that a library will bring us two additional keywords. So one is called reset and um, the other one is called shift. Why are they called like this? History, right? Just ignore it, right? And therefore, we need to be using this library. We could also add it over here. Into, into this and maybe we should maybe we should yeah let's add it over there instead let's just add it over here like this because originally I wasn't planning on committing that but now I'm thinking why not like this way you can just um, you know copy paste stuff okay so let's uh, remove that over here okay and uh, the last thing that we need to do is we need to pass uh, another scholar C option uh, which goes by the name of continuations enable like this Right, so we're passing a bunch of Scala, uh, Scala C options, so new Scala C option, new library, and the compiler plugin. Right, so now if I save that, if I just reload uh, my SBT, in my case, it's not going to download anything because I already prepared for this video, so it already knows everything. Right, but now we can uh, run. Um, everything is going to stay the same. It has to recompile everything now. We're running the 15. All right. So we're going to go back to CPS and then we're going to make uh, use of this library. So what we're going to do is over here, we're going to import Scala util continuations and inside of it are going to be the keywords that we're going to need. So I'm just going to compile it and see that, that everything works. Yes, everything is, is working, right? So Scala util continuations is uh, coming from this library. The Scala continuations uh, library. All right. So what we do is uh, is is this. Okay. So we do that as always, right? And we're gonna have our scope over here. Okay. So uh, remember how I said that the continuations in Scala are called delimited continuations. So uh, now we have a keyword that explicitly can delimit the continuation passing style from the rest of the program and, and it goes like this there is a keyword uh, keyword is it's not keyword it's basically just a method called reset inside inside of here right so reset so everything in here is going to be written in the continuation passing style and then once reset is done you know it can actually even you know produce a result and i'm going to show you this in a second uh, everything else will we're going to you know it's going to remain with with a regular stop so in order to implement that, all we need to do is we need to say by five equals. So what we're going to do is we're going to call CPS and we need to we need to give it the types, right? This is our CPS int unit, you know, so it's int and it's unit, same as before, right? We're passing it the five, right? And now instead of passing the continuation, we're just going to use a fancy keyword, another method called shift. So we're going to shift. And what shift will do is it will take this, this five, and everything else that is coming over here, everything else, everything, 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 and stick it into this continuation, right? This is what we did manually so far, right? We just took everything that was at the bottom and we sticked it into this continuation, right? So we can keep going like this. So we can get have 15 equals five plus shift CPS, same as before, int unit. Now it's going to be the 10. Okay. And now we can print line the 15. And this code, unless I made a typo somewhere, it should do exactly the same thing. Right. So this is the benefit of the of this plugin and of this library that you can uh, write the code that is, you know, it's still very, very um, similar looking to what we had at the very, very, very beginning. Right. The very, very first um, example was this one. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to bring it down. Right, so you can com compare this. this. Is basically the same code, right? You know, you have the five, you have the fifteen, you print it, print it out. So it's, it looks sequential, um, but it's still uh, you know doing CPS behind the scenes and uh, is gaining all the benefits from it. Okay, let me remove that. Uh, we can also improve this a little bit by um, having a method that is doing shift and CPS uh, at the same time for us. Right, so we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna copy that, copy that. Uh, by the way, notice that. Uh, let me save it. Over here, uh, if I if I remove that, it shouldn't compile. I think because it will it will um, not be able to um, infer these types, right? So this color inference algorithm is not capable um, to understand like CPS to, to that degree. So we have to actually annotate the types. 
in end unit. And this is exactly why uh, we're gonna introduce a teeny tiny helper method over here. And we're gonna call it shift CPS, right? So it's gonna do it's gonna do both of these, right? So shift CPS is gonna take the input of it of integer. In this case, it's an integer. Right? That's the thing, right? If we if we start introducing generics over here, then we're gonna end up with the same problem. This is why you know we're encoding uh, it directly, right? So we're gonna shift CPS and unit input, right? And here's the deal. The deal is that this is not just a regular int that is being produced by by shift CPS, right? What is being produced is an int. And with some weird stuff, unit, unit, right? So this CPS param is also coming coming from there, right? So let me see if it compiles. And I misplaced a param, which should not be here. It should be over here. So now it should be fine. There we go. So now instead of doing that, we can just call shift CPS instead. So instead of these, we can do shift CPS. Remove that. Shift CPS remove that so now the code looks um a teeny bit more um you know more pretty and the last thing that i'm going to show you is that uh you know this reset block also can uh return something right so i'm gonna i'm gonna do that over here and uh let's say that it returns a string so let's say well um string equals uh whatever comes back from reset so we're gonna have um to change uh this over here to strings right over here and uh, now an in comes in and the string comes out right uh, so now by the end instead of printing out 15 we're just gonna return 15 to string 15 dot to string and uh, over here we're gonna go back to the regular flow print line string and also let me just do do that so that so that you're convinced console dot reset all right, and there we go. This is the the green fifteen. Uh, I'm gonna remove that now. So just, just a just a demonstration. All right, so we're pretty much uh, done with this example, and we're do we're done with the plugin. So um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna um, give you a few examples of um, you know why CPS actually can be useful. So uh, traditionally, you can use it um, to do something like. Um, to, to basically to create your own control structures because CPS, especially um, the one that is not delimited, um, it will allow you to, to do whatever you want, right? So your, your, your functions all of a sudden don't even have to return. They can go into this continuation and never can come back. It is not possible in Scala because it is not possi possible with delimited continuation, right? But what you can do is you can do something like when, right? So uh, when is going to be um, the version of, the continuation version of if, right? So it has the uh, if case and the else case types you give it some condition condition which is a boolean right and you give it two continuations i'm going to carry it all the way because uh, i don't want to waste uh, your time so you're going to give it uh you, you tell it what to do in the if case right and you're going to tell it what to do in the else case right and let's just produce any to um uh, to to help the type inference uh, a little bit okay so we're going to say if condition run the if case otherwise Run the else case, right? So now, if you had some uh, some uh, regular code, whoops, that's fine like this as well. I'll print down 25. First of all, let's see if it compiles. Yeah, it does. All right. So uh, you could have some some regular code where you print out. Let's actually have like a val x equals five, right? And we're gonna print out something big. I'm gonna say okay. So if if x is bigger than three then good otherwise otherwise bad right nothing fancy so um if it's if it's bigger than than um than than, than three then i'm going to see good otherwise i'm going to see see bad over there right so we're going to have um the five again so that, what we can do now is we can go into print line and we just can, can we can replace if with uh when and we're going to have curly braces over here curly brace over here there's no else anymore right it's just a current function right so uh, condition first block second block right and uh, now we're you know because because we converted them into thunks uh, thunks are the functions that um, don't take anything as, as, as a parameter and just um, run the code like this and like that 
Okay, so uh, this is basically exactly the same thing, and it doesn't work because unspecified value parameter else uh, else case. Uh, really? Did I? Oh, I wanted to curry it even more. I wanted to curry it like that. There we go. Okay, so now we see good in both cases, and we see bad uh, also in uh, both cases. And as we know, Scala has uh, also fancy a fancy uh, syntax for uh, for thunks, which uh, goes by the name of uh, by name parameters. So if we remove these, I'm sorry, that's too much. I want to do that. So if you, if you just remove that, then it, then this becomes a by name parameter. Um, because it's a by name parameter, you can also not call you cannot call it with with parens over here. So now we can remove these like that. So you can you can you can write like you know uh, kind of cool looking DSLs. The last thing that I'm going to show you is um, actually how you can create your own loop even without using the while keyword. So we're gonna uh, copy that. Go down. Go down over here. Okay, so uh, over here we're going to create a loop, which, by the way, is tail recursive, and we we'll give it some condition, which will be reevaluated, and we we'll give it some body, which is going to be a by name parameter, and we'll say okay. So if condition is fulfilled, then just run the body and call yourself again call yourself again condition and body remember remember that by name parameters you know they are you know what's behind them is basically thunks right so behind them are functions so we're actually calling them twice like usually uh when, when you see people uh, you know making tutorials about by name parameters usually they would um they would um explicitly tell you that most of the times, this is not what you want. Like most of the times, you want to sort of freeze them, right? So, if, for example, you would say lazy val uh, frozen condition, and you will put it over here, right? And then you will use frozen condition just so that you don't evaluate it multiple times. But in this case, this is exactly what we want. We want to evaluate it multiple times. So, first of all, let's see if it compiles. It should. Yeah, it compiles. So now let's use it, right? So we have var acc equals zero. We're going to have a regular while loop, with, which goes like this. Right, ACC plus equals one. Print line ACC. The regular while loop produces the ten, and we're gonna do loop instead. Right, so we effectively we effectively renamed the while loop into the loop uh, without actually using the while keyword. All right, all that's left to do is to commit that. I originally didn't plan on committing that, but um, let's 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 do that. Okay, so let's add the CPS, uh, git commit hyphen am. Uh, this was video 14. Uh, I'm just going to call it CPS uh, introduction uh, like this. All right, so git push. There we go. So now let's go and check it out just to make sure. CPS introduction. And uh, yeah, we changed the build file a little bit and we basically just created this entire. Um, CPS file that you can look at at your own pace. All right, so that's all I got for you today. In the next video, we're actually going to use it for something you know useful. Uh, please remember that uh, I'm new to CPS myself, so take everything I said, as already mentioned, with a grain of salt, uh, um, because I might have misunderstood a few things myself. Um, sorry for that. Uh, all right, that's been Vlad, devinsidey.com. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and most importantly, take care.